So my assignment for today is to talk about the rules for voter registration, because this is where a lot of people have questions. Voter registration is not hard. Voter registration is easy, but you need to go in with a plan. If you answer your questions ahead of time, know what you're doing, it's really easy, and it's a great way to empower the, the neighbors that we're serving. I like that, that word. We're going to use that a lot more often. So let's talk about the rules. So once you embark on a voter registration drive, you want to know a couple things. When you're doing voter registration forms, and you've got some in your packet, we're going to talk about how to fill them out in just a few minutes. State law says that when you're doing a voter registration drive, these completed voter registration forms by law need to be turned in with ten, within 10 days. So one easy way to do this is if you're doing voter registration regularly, write it on your calendar. Put it right there, pick a time that you're gonna do that. So for me, it was always Monday afternoon. Every Monday afternoon, I was gonna go drop off our voter reg forms, and that was my plan for the week. And if you write it into your schedule and make, it that, make that your plan, then you don't have to worry about do you remember to do it on time or do you forget. Just write it on your calendar, set yourself a reminder, it makes it real easy so that way you, there's no risk of forgetting. They can be mailed or dropped off to either the Board of Elections or the Ohio Secretary of State's office. Whichever one is more convenient for you, either one is fine. So if you, uh, the County Board of Elections office for Franklin County is up on Morse Road, the old coal store up there. The Ohio Secretary of State's office is downtown on Broad Street. They've got a walk-up uh, office right on the ground floor. Either one of those is okay. You can mail them or drop them off in person to either one. Just make sure you do it within that 10 days. So next step, we want to talk about the rules for who can register to vote, who is eligible to be a voter in Ohio. First off, you need to be a U.S. citizen. Um, you need to be 18 years or older on or before the date of the election. And this is important because this, this became a po point of controversy last year, some of you may remember. So you need to be 18 by election day. So if you are voting on something like an issue or a candidate, you need to be 18 by that day. However, if you are 17 years old, you can vote in a primary for choosing candidates who will be on the ballot on election day when you'll be 18. This was a big controversy last year. So if you have somebody who's 17 years old and they're going to be 18 by the next election, they can go ahead and fill out the registration form because they will be 18 by election day. You need to be a resident of Ohio for at least 30 days before Election Day. Um, you need to be not currently incarcerated for a felony conviction. We'll come back to this and talk about this in more detail in a minute. You have to have not been declared incompetent to vote by a court. Uh, this happens a lot when you're in elder care um, and nursing care facilities. Uh, it's not as common everywhere else, but that's when we tend to see that more often. Um, and this one is really rare that you haven't been permanently disenfranchised for, for violating election law. Very, very rare, but we need to make sure that we articulate. These are the, the six criteria to be registered to vote. So the most important ones, you're a citizen of the U.S., you're 18 or older on or before Election Day, and you've been a resident of Ohio for 30 days leading up to the election. So I promised we'd come back to this. You've got a card in your packet, a blue card. The ACLU of Ohio produces these. You've got a few in your packet. You can get more from their office. If you'd like, their information is on the card. You can get more of these. This is one of the biggest misconceptions that people have. In Ohio, you have the right to vote if you've had a conviction. If you have a misdemeanor, you absolutely have a right to vote. If you are in jail pending felony charges but have not been convicted, have not been sentenced, you have a right to vote. If you have a felony conviction on your record from ages ago and you're out in the community, you have the right to vote. The only time you lose your right to vote is while you are serving a sentence for a felony conviction. So or if you are in prison or jail serving a felony sentence, that is when you lose your right to vote. At all other times, you have it. Not, this is not true in a lot of states. And, and anytime we do this workshop in Cincinnati, we get a lot of pushback because Kentucky across the river is one of the states that disenfranchises people permanently for felony convictions. Some states do. This is one of the few areas where Ohio law is really good. And I don't get to say that a lot. <laughs> that we give people their right to vote back. The important thing to know, though, 
is that while, if somebody has that felony conviction, as soon as they're convicted and sentenced, their voter registration is canceled. So once they come back out in the community, we need to make sure we're getting them re-registered. So the ACLU and other groups are putting a lot of effort into working with re-entry centers to make sure that we are letting our neighbors know they get their right to vote back. And we want to make sure that we're stressing this with the community because a lot of people think they've lost that right. And I can't tell you how many conversations we've had with people that are so excited, sometimes in tears, that they get that back. They get that power back over their community and their lives. So we need to be good ambassadors sharing that information out that you get your right to vote back in Ohio. The, another question we get a lot is what address do you use? Remember, if we go back to eligibility, you need to be a US citizen, you need to be 18, you need to be a resident. Nowhere does it say that you have to be a resident with fixed housing. You just have to be a resident. So we want to stress that you have your right to vote even if you're homeless, even if you're in transition, even if you don't have stable housing, you still have that right to vote. It is yours. Do not let somebody take it away from you. Voter registration forms do require an address. However, state law is pretty generous. State law defines your residence as the place you intend to return to. That's pretty broad. And on the Secretary of State's website, they actually have an explanation, and you can print this out and post it in case people are, are concerned about this, that under Ohio law, your residence is the location you consider to be your, your permanent residence, not temporary, that you're going to return to. And it's wherever you're, whenever you leave, it's the place you plan to come back to. That is your residence. So if you don't have a fixed place that you live in, but are consistent or regular inhabitant of a shelter or another location that you return to regularly, you can use that location as your residence under Ohio law for voter registration purposes. Now, there are some practical things we have to keep in mind here. So you can use, you could, if you intend to return to a park bench or, or a place in the community that you consider that to be your fixed residence, you might consider that to be where, where you reside. However, part of being a registered voter is they'll send you mail, and you can't receive mail at that park bench. So when you're thinking about what residence to use, it's helpful if you have a residence where you can get mail. So that's where shelters in particular can be a really good choice for someone to use as their residence for voting purposes, because a lot of community shelters do have mailbox programs. So that if somebody registers to vote there, they want to get their mailings about voting notices, um, as well as if they're getting other notices, if they're on different benefit programs and have to be receiving uh, mailings from the government. Using a shelter address is perfectly legal in Ohio for voter registration purposes. But we need to empower our neighbors by letting them know that. So that's what address to use. Now let's talk a little bit about registration. I've got a, I love this picture, and I, I like uh, Ms. Diggs' example about the pink chair and the pink table. Make it visible, make it welcoming, make it easy, make it fun. That is a huge thing. So let's talk about your options for registering voters. I am super excited because this is the first year that I have gotten to do this training where we could talk about online voter registration, which is super exciting. It took Ohio long enough to get here. Um, we are way behind the curve, but we finally have it. So voters in Ohio now have a choice of how you want to register to vote. You can register using one of these paper forms that's in your packet, or you can register to vote online um, using the online voter registration form. Whichever one you use, ultimately the biggest thing is that you want to make sure people fill out the form correctly. That is the biggest problem we have, is to make sure that all the boxes are checked and filled in properly. So we want to walk through what some of the common challenges can be for both systems. Because we can help people troubleshoot to make sure that voter registration goes through and they get registered. So let's start off with our new one, online voter registration. It's real easy to remember. The website is myohiovote.com. Super easy to remember, myohiovote.com. And you go there and you can click 
there will be a big button that says register to vote or check your voter registration. You click that button, that gets you to the online voter registration system. So this is a great way, it's super quick. So if you're talking with folks or if you have a computer station set up, I know some places, some agencies are starting to include online voter registration where they have their, their voter registration stand. They might have one of those boxes with a stack of voter registration forms. Some will have a computer terminal set up. Um, we're even encouraging libraries to be uh, promoting this and letting folks know that they can register to vote online if they're using one of the computers at the library. Um, it's super quick, it's easy, um, you don't have, there's no paper to keep track of, you don't have to worry about mailing it in or turning it in every 10 days. Uh, you just go click, 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 you're done in two minutes, it's fast, you don't have that risk of forgetting. Um, you don't have to worry about people not following through and signing it and mailing it in. So it has that benefit of it's super quick. Um, it's fast, it's easy, and you're done. There, and you don't have to worry about things like if somebody has poor handwriting, can they read the handwriting? It, it solves that problem. So the, there are definitely some benefits to online voter registration. But there are some downsides too. There are pros and cons to everything in life. So what, one of the downsides is that in order to use the online registration system in Ohio, you need to have either a driver's license or a state ID card number in order to use it, along with the last four of your social security number. So if somebody does not have a driver's license or state ID card, they're going to need to be using the paper system. We are trying to convince the legislature to change state law so that people can use the online system without a driver's license or state ID card, but for the time being, that's, that's the law. So if someone has one of those IDs, then they can use the online system. If they don't, then they're gonna have to use the paper form for, for the time being. Are they requiring like a copy of it? No, you type in the number. The number, so what if you didn't know the number? Like I know my number. Yeah, if you know the number, you're good. Yeah, yeah. But if somebody doesn't have one of those ID cards, they don't have that number, then we're gonna to have to make sure that they have paper. What we're recommending for folks right now is it's, it's a good idea to set up both. So even if you wanna have the online registration available, if you've got con computer terminals for public use, um, we can promote that, but always have some paper forms on reserve because if somebody doesn't have one of those or say they lost it, their wallet was stolen, something like that, you wanna have that paper backup just to make sure that we're not turning anybody away that we're able to capture everybody. The other thing I wanna flag is that the current system is not very friendly for people who use screen readers or other assistive technology devices. So if you have somebody that has a vision impairment or a mobility impairment and uses assistive technology, they may be better off with the paper form because the, the, the current online system doesn't, isn't real compatible with screen readers.